On April 8, 2016, the Falcon 9 rocket launched the Dragon spacecraft to the International Space Station, and the first stage returned and landed on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship. Curious to know the significance of this landing type? Keep watching! Of course I still love you, OCISLY is an autonomous spaceport drone ship ASDS, that operates out of Port Canaveral, Florida. The drone ship is a modified barge outfitted with a large landing platform, station keeping thrusters and other equipment to allow SpaceX to land boosters at sea on high velocity missions that cannot carry enough fuel to allow for a return to launch site landing. Construction of OCISLY started in early 2015 and was built as a replacement for the original drone ship, just read the instructions, and the drone ship entered service in June of 2015. OCISLY is built upon a barge, Merrimack 304, and was modified in a Louisiana shipyard. Modifications include an expanded deck to increase the size of the landing platform, the installation of four thruster engines so the drone ship can autonomously maintain its position at sea and blast shielding to protect electrical and engine equipment on deck. It's equipped with four 300 horsepower azimuth thruster engines that are fitted to each corner of the landing platform. When deployed, they allow the drone ship to maintain a precise position while at sea. Elon Musk has stated that the drone ship is capable of maintaining its target position to within three meters, even under storm conditions. The drone ship can reportedly maintain its target position autonomously or under remote control by operators on a support ship. It's also fitted with cameras, sensors, and other measuring equipment to allow SpaceX to record and gather data on the landings. On a number of occasions, it has been shown that the cameras can be remotely adjusted and moved during landings to provide a better perspective. Moreover, it is fitted with two satellite antenna for the uplink of data and for communication with the incoming booster. A common problem experienced during SpaceX webcasts is the video connection to the drone ship cutting out during the landing. This occurs because vibrations created by the landing booster violently shake the drone ship, temporarily breaking the connection and uplink to the satellite. A robot officially named the Falcon 9 Securing Robot, but universally known as Octagrapper, lives on the drone ship and is deployed shortly after a booster landing. The robot is remotely driven from its blast-proof shelter and positioned underneath the Falcon 9. Four arms then raise up and latch onto the Falcon 9 octoweb, securing the booster. OCISLY is equipped with remotely operating firefighting hoses that can quickly deluge the drone ship in water in the event of an explosion or fire caused by a failed landing. SpaceX drone ships are not designed to autonomously move themselves over long distances. Instead, a tugboat is used to tow the drone ship to the target position offshore in the Atlantic Ocean. The exact position of the drone ship is dependent on mission requirements. Boosters used on Starlink and geostationary transfer orbit missions typically land between 600 to 675 kilometers downrange. The furthest drone ship position was 1,239 kilometers downrange, set during the STP-2 Falcon Heavy mission in June of 2019. OCISLY and the tugboat will leave Port Canaveral up to seven days in advance of the launch date, with other accompanying support ships leaving after. After traveling to the landing zone, the thrusters and other equipment will be engaged. Support vessels and the tugboat will then retreat to a safe distance to observe the landing. Of course, I Still Love You is unmanned during all landings. Once the landing is complete, Octagrapper will be deployed to secure the booster and SpaceX technicians will disengage the thrusters and prepare the drone ship for the return journey. The tugboat will then tow OCISLY back to Port Canaveral. You may ask yourself, what is the point of landing SpaceX's rocket on a barge in the ocean? And the main reason is that in certain cases, the first stage simply does not have enough fuel to come back to land. Launching a heavy payload or pulling something into a higher orbit requires that the first stage does a lot more in terms of generating velocity 
for the payload before it hands off the rest of the mission to Stage 2. And this is why SpaceX is focusing recently on having more powerful engines and more fuel. A conventional launch mission will leave the stage with close to as little fuel as possible by the time it detaches in order to be efficient. SpaceX wants the first stage to deliver the rest of the rocket closer to the orbit with enough leftover fuel to boost back and land, which is also tough because any fuel left over for landing is just added weight it had to bring all the way up with it. Sometimes it does not have enough fuel or is simply too far downrange by the time it detaches from stage 2 to make the round trip. In conclusion, the motivation behind landing on a barge is not necessarily to mitigate risk or to prove that the feat is possible, but more of a result of logistics. A drone ship floating on the ocean is a harder target to hit than a large expanse of ground, since it is smaller and floating on moving water. Plus, all of SpaceX's ocean landing attempts have resulted in rocket explosion. Still landing at sea can be less tricky than ground landings, and the main reason has to do with fuel. To return back to Earth, the Falcon 9 has to use the fuel left over from takeoff to reignite its engines in a series of burns. These burns help to adjust the rocket's speed and reorient the vehicle into the right position for entering Earth's atmosphere and then landing. Before moving on, be sure to like or dislike the video so that we can continue to improve our content and make these videos better for you. Plus, be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell button so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. Different types of landing techniques require different amounts of fuel though, and that revolves around how the Falcon 9 launches. The rocket doesn't travel straight upward into space, but follows a parabolic arc up and away from the launch pad. Because of this, the rocket has to go through a lot to conduct a ground landing. The vehicle has to slow down in the direction it's heading, completely turn around, and then retread the vertical and horizontal distance it's covered to get back to the landing site. That requires a lot of extra fuel. Ocean landings aren't as complicated as that. SpaceX's drone ship can position itself in an ideal place to catch the vehicle on its more natural path back to Earth. That decreases the distance the rocket needs to travel, as well as the amount of fuel needed to maneuver the Falcon 9 for landing. For SpaceX missions that use up lots of fuel, performing a ground landing may not even be possible. Rockets that launch heavy payloads or go to a high orbit need extra speed during the initial ascent, and extra speed needs more fuel. Those Falcon 9s that have to reach extra high velocities don't have as much fuel left over for the landing. That's when the drone ship is the best, if not only, option for recovery. The whole point of landing these rockets is to help SpaceX save money on launch costs. Right now, most rockets are destroyed or lost after they launch into space, meaning entirely new rockets must be built for each mission. SpaceX hopes to recover as many rockets as possible to cut down on the cost of creating new vehicles. The Falcon 9 costs $60 million to make and only $200,000 to fuel. If a recovered rocket doesn't need too much updating and refurbishment between launches, Reusability could eliminate a good chunk of that manufacturing cost. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell expects reusable rockets to bring down launch costs by about 30%, making the company's vehicles an even cheaper option for clients than it already is. However, the true cost of a launch will depend on how many times they can reuse the stage, which is still up for debate. But taking some educated guesses and quoting SpaceX officials, reusing just the first stage they could possibly get a Falcon 9 launch down to as low as about $18 million per launch if they were able to accept slim profit margins. However, with SpaceX's competitors still trying to catch up to their current prices and the company shifting substantial development work towards Starship and Starlink, prices will likely remain well above that level for now to help finance those ambitions. SpaceX sometimes land on the ASDS when they could land back at the pad and the reason is because Initially, barge landings were about safety and were used for practice before moving towards landing back at the launch site. However, even though RTLS has now been proven to work, the booster cannot always land at the launch site. The main practical difference is that RTLS trajectory consumes more fuel than ASDS, which eats into the payload capability. RTLS loses about 30% total capacity versus about 15% for ASDS landings. 
Barge landings are needed for high-mass, high-velocity launches such as geostationary transfer orbit missions. During these types of missions, it's not just physically possible to return to the launch site. This is because they put such a high demand on the rocket. The rocket needs to work hard to raise a heavy bird to the speeds required for high orbits. To land back at the pad, the speed at stage separation cannot be greater than about 1650 meters per second. If you can land on a ship, there's no need to zero out the booster's lateral velocity, so stage separation can occur at up to around 1900 meters per second. Put another way, the extra Delta V boost back expense inflicts a penalty on payload mass. The process for bringing back boosters that land on the ASDS consists of different aspects. The first job is to secure the booster. While the center of gravity is pretty low for the booster, as all the engines and residual propellant is at the bottom, it can still slide around in rough seas if unsecured or even fall over. In the past, SpaceX would attach the boosters to jack stands and weld those to the deck of the barge. However, this took time and could not be done in rough seas, as it was too dangerous for the crew. To resolve this, SpaceX has developed a remote-controlled robot, informally named Octograbber or Roomba, that slides under the booster and attaches to its four hold-down points on the OctaWeb to keep it in place. Once the booster is secured, a tug tows the ASDS back to port. At the port, the booster is lifted off the barge using a crane and placed onto a stand which supports the weight of the booster from the launch hold-down point. Once on the stand, the legs can be removed or retracted, and then the booster is rotated to the horizontal and placed on the back of a transporter to be taken back to the launch site. At the launch site, the stage is inspected, any required maintenance is carried out, and then a series of test fires are carried out in order to requalify the booster for a relaunch. Thanks for watching everyone. Can you guess why does half of the Falcon booster look black or dirty after it has landed? Do you know why Falcon boosters have four legs? Did you learn anything new in this video? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.